Hey guys, on Season 1, Episode 2, Tempest Fugit, and I was definitely really looking forward to this episode. I really did love the premiere, as you guys knew. It really did surprise me. Like I said, it kind of came out of nowhere. I expect this to be just another type of freeform show, uh, but I like that they wanted us, you know, to take our time and really were trying to keep all the secrets as secret as, you know, just that. Keep that a secret. I like the way they did that in the first episode. And this episode, I think, was right on par with the first one. It wasn't better. It wasn't worse. It was just as good. I really did love this episode overall. I thought there was some really great stuff going on. Not a ton to talk about, really. There definitely is stuff that happened, but not nearly as much as uh, what happened in the first episode. Um, there's not, you know, there's definitely stuff to talk about still. There's just not as much going on in this one. But let's just get right into it because I definitely do want to talk about this episode overall. I really am loving this show so far. And like I said, it really does not feel like a freeform show. It feels like something a little bit more mature and I really do like that. So we start off with we see Holden having his dream where the last episode left off. Only this time we get to see it. And it's as horrifying as you can imagine. He's talking to Willa. She gives him the special compass before telling him to run. And uh, everything's going okay. You know, they're talking and everything and she gives him this compass. And then, all of a sudden, we see her face is starting to melt off, so I'm guessing that's what the dolls had to do with it, because we know that, uh, they were figurine- the faces were melting off these figurines, I'm assuming that was Willa in the dream, like, the figurines were Willa, and I think that's very interesting overall. And this obviously, uh, scares Holden away, he has no idea what's going on there, and, uh, I thought that was a pretty good start to the episode overall. Right away gets into the creepy factor, and you know that definitely something's going on. And again, I like that we're, right, that we're still very unknown what's going on. It makes it that much more frightening when we start to see some haunting images like this. So he wakes up, and he's immediately questioned by the police about the bar attack, but he doesn't really tell them about his magic powers. And they don't really get much of anywhere. You know, he tells them the basic information of what went down, and... Luke is doing what he can to try to protect him and try to cover for him, but Holden seems like, you know, he does, he obviously can't really explain how he has these powers, and no one seems to know he has them right now. You know, his parents don't know, Luke doesn't know, no one really knows. I think the only person that seems to know is Willa. Willa is the only person that really knows he has these powers, and uh, it makes sense why he's obviously being kind of secretive about it, because, I mean, how do you just go up to someone and say, hey, I have these magical powers, here's what they can do, here's how they work. You know, it's not really easy to do that, and it is something this episode very well touches upon, is how hard it is for Holden to to acclimate to his life, you know, and still be this college kid while also subsequently trying to, you know, deal with these powers. It's not the easiest, you know, thing to do. The show very well uh, showed that in this episode, and that's something that I'm definitely looking forward to seeing the rest of the show do. I think overall it's one of the more interesting aspects of the show so far. So, since the coma, Holden's mom has gotten very, very religious to the point where she actually wants to take her sons to church, and we get the sense they haven't gone to church in a long time, and he sees none other than Jeff, Kevin's brother, who chased him into the woods 12 years ago, and kind of is the thing that got them into this whole mess, because we know that Jeff, you know, caught him drinking, that's how Holden ended up in the woods, and that's where this whole situation kind of started, so... Obviously, Holden is very much threatened by that, but at the same time, he then sees the old man from his dream. So we don't know who he is, but he's everywhere. You know, everywhere Holden goes, he sees this man, and Holden is able to close his eyes, and suddenly, he and the old man are the only two people in the church. So clearly, they are connected telepathically, and I did like the church scene, you know, was dedicated to Holden because of how he was in a coma, and how they were, uh, giving court, this, the minister was kind of giving, like, a sermon to Holden for him being there and everything, but clearly, they are connected telepathically to some other realm of existence. We just don't really know what it's all about. Again, we know that he wants Holden, but what does he really want him for is very, you know, the reason why he wants Holden there is very unclear right now. We really don't know. So he also discovers a phone in his jackets, and Willa is calling him nonstop. He refused to answer because he doesn't really want anything to do with her right now. He's doing the best he can to try to live a normal life. You can definitely tell he's doing what he can to live a normal life, and it doesn't exactly work out for the better, really. It does not work out very well for Holden, to say the least. Uh, you know, he's steering himself away from Willa. So we don't get to see a ton of her. We see her at the end of the episode, but we don't see a ton of Willa in this episode. But back at home, Holden's dad gives him his old motorbike to fix up, leading to some nice father some bonding time, and giving Holden the way to get around, since as we know, he can't really drive. He doesn't know how to. I mean, as much as Luke can teach him, you know, Holden doesn't have his license or anything like that, so he can't really drive. And there's a lot of montages and episodes of him on this motorbike and him trying to get around and things like that. And it was fun to watch, but again, I didn't 
didn't really feel there was a ton of stuff going on here. That's why there really isn't a ton to talk about because there was a lot of uh, him driving around this motorbike and bonding with his father, which was fun, but I just feel like there wasn't a ton going on. It wasn't until we get to the crazy second half of this episode when things really do start to get crazy. Nice and it had all my skin for Jesus and my bad healer really ruined that kid. See the lip is a little too her face. This is no need for me. See how she did all of it. And this is a need for a girl in that. And it must have been a movie yet. So what do you do when you're dying? You follow and sit. That's why she's so weird. Oh, and he's sitting in the panel for the booking of healer. Maybe she can get out of the air, wouldn't it? And then he's got a healer. And if she don't get shot, I'm here. And this is all of it. Speaking of the next day, I need to be a healer. And this is all of it. All healers are all. Sergeant <laughs> So the next day, Holden decides he should probably call Willa after all, because, you know, all this strange stuff is going on. He needs to make sure that he, before something bad, before something worse happens, that he gets a hold of Willa. So he visits her at a new apartment, and she sees a special compass from his dream on her table, and that was definitely interesting. In fact, she had that compass there, and since she said they lived a life together when he was in a coma, he has a question, and that, of course, is where, which is a question that we have been wanting to know the entire show, and that is the way this episode ends overall. Really good stuff going on with Holden and Will, but that's not the only stuff going on this episode, because we start to see more of the mysterious man in the yellow jacket in this episode. Now, who exactly this guy is, we don't really know, and how he fits into this show, I'm not entirely sure, uh, but we know that there's definitely something going on with him, because he heads to this remote compound that seems to be some type of cult that looks a lot like where, uh, that, that uh, it's, it's this cult basically, and... He's supposed to meet with Frost, who's the man on the phone, but instead he meets with someone else. It's this woman who talks about the organization and how Holden's important to their cause and basically how, why they, you know, essentially need him, but no answers are really given. So she says the, the, that the uh, yellow jacket man is being reassigned because he was supposed to be discreet and now the cops are after him. You know, now that he had that whole bar fight, now he's a fugitive. So they obviously are not happy with him at all, uh, to say the least. And the next day he takes a cab into the suburb where we discover he has a wife 
and a daughter and is pretending to be a traveling salesman. So this is very interesting, uh, int actually, that he is pretending to be this traveling salesman when in reality he clearly is somehow connected to what's going on with Holden. But that's really all the information we get. We don't really know what else is going on there. And uh, that's really everything to have in the episode. Now let's get into it, talk about where I think we're going to go from here because it definitely is a lot to talk about. So overall, like I said, not a ton happened in this episode. I mean, besides the huge thing at the end, not really a ton of other stuff went down. You know, Holden got to tap more into his powers, or that was interesting overall, but just not a ton of stuff was going on. Uh, but let's first talk about Holden and Willa, because obviously, you know, he knows they had a life together. He knows that she's not lying, and I think that Willa is very much telling the truth. I mean, after something like this happens, where he sees the compass, and he's seeing these dreams are starting to come true, I mean, clearly Willa is telling the truth. I, I trust Willa wholeheartedly. I think that what Willa is saying makes a lot of sense, and we don't know everything that's going on. I'm pretty sure episode three is going to be our answer episode, the episode where we do start to get answers, the episode where we start to realize what's going on. Hopefully, they don't reveal too much, but I'm sure episode three is going to give us a large amount of exposition and a lot of answers as to what's going on, which I really am happy about. I like the show, again, has taken their time with this. Like, they're not just revealing it all one by one. They are still taking their time, and I'm, I'm happy they're doing that for the most part. Uh, and I think it is benefiting the show overall. So that's definitely very interesting as to where that's going to go. And what Holden's going to find out from Willa, I honestly have no idea. I really don't know what kind of life they had together. I don't know what she's about to reveal to him. Really, anything could happen here, but we'll have to see. Um, as far as this man in the yellow jacket, how is he connected to Holden? I mean, clearly he's causing a disruptance. You know, they need Holden. They feel that he's causing problems, and I could very well see them taking him out. The fourth episode's called The Man in the Yellow Jacket, which is very interesting. So I don't know if that's going to be all about his origin, but clearly he is somehow connected to Holden. And we know that the old man, who I'm assuming is Frost, uh, is also, you know, somehow connected to Holden. We don't know what that's all about, but they are telepathically connected, and he needs Holden, and we don't know why he needs Holden, but I'm pretty sure that has something to do with uh, the man in the yellow jacket, but again, we'll have to see. I don't entirely know, uh, and I think the direction that they're going with this is very interesting. You get the sense this is a guy that works for them and that he's not exactly the most reliable guy, like he's kind of going to do his own thing, and I'm wondering where his story exactly is going to go, because I really don't know at this point, and that makes me that much more intrigued to see where we're going to go with this, because I think that overall is very interesting. Uh, the whole thing with Holden's dreams, it seems like when Holden has a dream, it's different from when you and I have a dream. When he has a dream, it kind of predicts the future and things like that. Like, it kind of has some messages about when, you know, what the future's gonna hold, and I think that's very interesting overall, because, you know, she gave them special compass, then by the end of the episode, the special compass is right there. So I think that that definitely was intentional. There's definitely a reason why he dreamt about the special compass. Now, why, I'm not sure, but again, I don't know. Uh, that's gonna be interesting as well. And I thought you did a really good job in this episode of tapping into uh, the awkward stage for Holden because the show so far is doing a really good job of blending both the supernatural elements because they're definitely doing a tremendous job with that, but also Holden's awkward stages because, you know, he was uh, in a coma for 12 years and he was completely, uh, you know, he hasn't kissed a girl, he can't drive, and those things are really starting to affect him, you see, and especially that scene with that girl, I think, is a prime example that maybe the best example they've done so far of him not knowing how to react. You know, he kisses her back because he doesn't want to make it too awkward, and I like that. I like that Holden is doing his best to make this as normal and comfortable for everyone as possible, but at the same time, it's not comfortable. I mean, he knows that this is weird for him. He's not used to this kind of thing, and he doesn't really know what's going on there, and I, I like that. I think it's just adding this really nice element to the show, because the show is both a supernatural thriller, but it's also a coming-of-age story, and I like the way that those two elements are very well, com you know, combined so far. They're doing a good job of keeping that very uniformed, and I like that. Uh, but the other big thing is Kevin, because we did see in this episode, you know, Jeff came, and it seems like things are starting to go sour for Holden and Kevin. You know, Kevin doesn't really understand Holden. Holden obviously is not one Kevin involved with any of this, uh, and there really is starting to be a rift between these two, and it's really getting quite intense, and I get it, honestly. I really do understand why things are tough between these two. You know, Kevin uh, wants the best for Holden, but Holden knows he can't really trust Kevin, just something about him, you know, he knows he can't trust, so things are getting quite rough between them, and I'm pretty sure that the tension is going to deepen throughout the show, but we'll have to see 
overall, guys, I really enjoyed this episode overall. I thought there was some really good information here. I thought there was some really well done scenes overall between the party stuff and things like that. I thought they did a really good job with it. And, I, and while there wasn't a ton going on, the stuff that happened was really, really great. And that really made me from thinking this was a lackluster episode. Because if it had been for the second half, I would have thought this would have been a more lackluster type episode. But because of how great the second half really was and what ended up happening there, this episode then got really, really great for me. The stuff with the man in the yellow jacket. I thought they developed it very well. And I am going to give this episode a beyond. Episode, uh, season one, episode two, Tempest Fugit, a four to five or a B plus. So for guys, my review this episode beyond the most guys saw this episode overall. Like I said, from here on out, I am going to try to do two episodes per week. So you can look forward to episodes three and four next week. I don't know when I'll review them, but I will get to both of them. And then from there, I'll just, you know, go two episodes a week, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. You guys get it. That's how I'm going to do it uh, from here on out. So definitely look forward to that. But let me know what you guys saw this episode. Love to your thoughts on it. Did you like it more in the premiere? Did you like it less? I love to your thoughts on, you know, what you thought of it overall. That's for this video. Hope you guys enjoy it. We'll see you guys in my next video, which guys, my next video, I'm going to be reviewing us uh, because of the new. Uh, Underworld movie coming out on Friday. I'm going to be reviewing all the Underworld movies to you, despite the fact if they're shitty or not. I'm going to continue because I want to review Underworld Blood Wars. I will do everything in my power to get through those movies. I have a feeling they're going to be kind of ass to get through and they're not going to be very good, but I'm going to watch all of them regardless. So look forward to my review of the first Underworld tonight. Uh, that will be my next review, and I will see you guys for that. Okay, bye.